We did a video the other day about centrifugal pumps, and when I was talking about it, I realized afterwards that I've actually forgotten a few things that perhaps I should have mentioned. The problem with these freestyle videos and the fact that they're only, I don't know, maybe eight, 10 minutes long or five minutes sometimes is that it's quite difficult to get everything into that space and I tend to forget things. But anyway, we'll go through it just quickly now, the things that I forgot, or at least the things that occurred to me. So with this centrifugal pump here, it's the world's most popular pump. And the reason is not just because it's quite simple in design and easy to maintain. It's also because the pump itself can be used to pump different types of liquid. What I mean here is we have things with high viscosity and we have things with low viscosity. And they're all going to be drawn through here and then pass through the impeller and then outwards radially. So we know that already. They come out this discharge pipe over here. The type of impeller used though really dictates what we're going to pump. So for example, this pump can be used, it's got a closed impeller and it's gonna be used for low viscosity liquids and usually those kind of liquids that have very few suspended solids. So let's have a look at different types of impeller for a moment. We've got a closed impeller, got an open impeller and we should have another impeller. This one's called a semi-open impeller. I'm more of a semi-closed impeller kind of guy, but I guess you can have one or the other. It's gonna be the same thing. Right, so let's have a look here. Closed impeller. So this is a closed impeller. This is how it would look down here. Now the impeller itself has got veins. Can I have a look at the veins? There's the veins. Okay, so the veins are, this is one here where my mouse is. Here's another one. And here's another one here and etc. In between the veins, we've got channels. This is a channel where my mouse is. And the fluid, the liquid, is going to get sucked. In fact, no, it isn't. It's going to come into the middle, and then it's going to be thrown out radially through these channels. Notice the channels get wider as they go outwards. That's because we're getting a velocity change, a velocity reduction, and a pressure increase. That's why we have that shape that you can see here, where the cross-sectional area gradually increases. And that, you can actually trace that back to Bernoulli's principle if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that. So we've got the shroud. The shroud is the top piece of the impeller. Here's the top shroud. Here is the bottom shroud. And then we've got a space where the shaft goes through. And this closed impeller, it's the most efficient type of centrifugal pump impeller because it's closed and we can guide the liquid as it travels through the impeller. And if we go up here, you can actually see where the flow would be. Not sure what's in this one. That one's just chopped in half. Let's have a look now at the semi-open impeller. That's similar to what we just saw a moment ago, but this one is how it would actually look. That is the entire impeller. There's only one shroud. The shroud is on the back side, and the veins are attached to the shroud, and then the channels in between, and the shaft, and also the shaft key. The shaft key is very important because all of the force to rotate the impeller is going to be placed through the shaft key. It's a common job that the shaft key wears over time, so keep an eye out for that. Now, when we've got this kind of shape like this one here, we're going to use it for fluids that are maybe slightly more viscous, although generally they're going to be pretty much the same as what we saw with the closed impeller. So we want a low viscosity fluid, but this time around we can take a, a fluid that has more, how would you say, contaminants, more suspended bodies, and in other words, we can take something that's maybe got bits of grit, bits of mud, bits of sand, but is predominantly water. And if we go to the open impeller type over here, then you see again, the shroud this time is very small and we've got the veins and that's all it is. That is the entire impeller on its own. This one is well suited for when we have a large amount of suspended bodies. So now we're pumping a slurry or some kind of sludge or something like that. I can tell you that this type of impeller is used with sewage pumping systems. The reason being tissue and, well, let's face it, poo and wee and water and everything else, urine, I guess, is going to go, I should actually say urine and feces, so it's not very <laughs> engineering terms to say poo there. People start thinking of Winnie the Pooh and the bear. But anyway, so we've got this here and there's going to be bits of poo flying through it. There's going to be bits of tissue. There's going to be bits of, well, who knows what going through it. And this, because of the shape, it actually serves as a bit of a macerator. Now, if you're on a boat and this thing's churning around, 
They have a see-through plastic cover and you'll be looking at the impeller like this and you'll be able to see it rotate and stop and stuff like that. And you'll be able to look at the contents that are inside the, the pump. So inside the pump casing. And I'll be honest, it's not a particularly nice view to have. I mean, as an engineer, you look in and yeah, it's all brown and pretty murky and you definitely don't want to stick your hands in there. Uh, but unfortunately, that plastic cover has to come off occasionally. And then you're going to need to give this lovely piece of equipment a bit of a clean. It's a bit of a stinky affair. You try and flush a lot of water down there first, but some stuff, unfortunately, just doesn't flush very well. And yeah, so anyway, the only job that was worse than this for me was jigsawing into a sewage pipe, a plastic sewage pipe. And unfortunately, it was so tight that I actually had to jigsaw with it above me. And uh, yeah, you can imagine it, was, it wasn't a particularly nice feeling, especially with all of the stuff dripping down onto you. But that's the joy of working on a boat. But anyway, coming back to the point. So this will act as a macerator and it will slice through all the poo and the tissue and everything else or whatever's flowing through there. And then it helps it get pumped on its way. So it's having two functions. Because of the suspended bodies, though, the, the parts here, they'll tend to wear away uh, a lot more quickly than, say, when you've got a closed body impeller over here or a closed impeller, which the parts won't wear away as quick because there's not so many suspended particles. There's not so many suspended bodies. And as I mentioned before, this impeller is more efficient than this type here because it is essentially able to channel the liquid or the slurry, whatever it might be, through those channels rather than over here. Uh, we can't do that. We've only got one side that's open. Um, or in fact, we've only got one side that's closed, I should say. So we're not really directing whatever's flowing through here very well at all. Right. I think I've explained about as much as I wanted to explain there on centrifugal pumps. The only other thing that I forget or I forgot to mention last time, which might be of interest, is the wearing. If we zoom in here, you'll see this wearing. That's it where my mouse is. The reason you have that is because the pump, this overhung pump, it vibrates a bit, it moves around a lot, the impeller spins, and we want to change the wearing. We don't really want to change the whole impeller. Impellers cost a lot of money, as does the volute casing. So we'll add wearings on the impeller and also on the casing itself, and those will wear away over time, whereas the, rather than, I should say, wear away the impeller or the the volute casing, which would cost a lot more money. You see those sacrificial parts also on shafts as well, I should mention, because you don't want the shaft to wear away. The shaft also costs a lot of money. So you want the other parts that are attached to the shaft to wear away because they are generally cheaper. That's just the way it goes. Right, let's pick something else for the next video. I don't know what it's gonna be. I was going more towards valves, but maybe we could pick something else like a turbine, who knows. Don't forget to follow me or subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks for your time.